Hey there, homemade Indonesia. Everybody out there, how we doing today? My name is Britt Arlen. I'm from Chicago in the United States, and today I'll be showing you how to make delicata squash gnocchi. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy. So the first thing we're going to do is cut this squash lengthwise down the middle and just scrape out, discard all the seeds and pulp in the middle of it so that when we roast it we don't have to clean that out later on. Now you can either throw out the seeds or you can pick through the seeds and roast them to eat by themselves or you can keep it all together use it for squash stock whatever you want to do but next I'm gonna coat this squash with a little olive oil this just happens to be roasted garlic oil that I had left over just gonna give the squash a little color when we're roasting it you don't have to go too heavy just enough to evenly cover it and we're gonna season it with a little salt and pepper just like you want to do with everything in life give it a little flavor and then we're ready to roast the squash we're gonna throw it in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit okay so now we're gonna cut a russet potato evenly that's already been peeled obviously so we can cook that in a pot of water that's already going next to me that you'll see in a moment. Um, the idea is to get the size of the potatoes pretty uniform, pretty even, so that they cook evenly. Um, but honestly, you're going to be cooking all of this till it's fully cooked and, and mushy and mashed. We're going to put it through a food mill later to fully incorporate with our squash and flour to put into our gnocchi. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to rice our potatoes. Um, they were in the pot of water for about five to six minutes I'd say. Um, I put about four cups of water and three tablespoons of kosher salt in that pot of boiling water. Cooked it for about five to six minutes. Um, so we're just going to use a potato ricer and just carefully run it through. You want to make sure that you're doing this while the potatoes are still extremely warm so they don't cool down. It's just easier go through the holes. Make sure you have a bowl underneath so it catches all the potatoes that are coming out. It's just easier, cleaner. Um, I have the smallest hole setting on the food mill so it's going to take a little longer. Just want those potatoes to be extra fine while they're going through. took the squash out of the oven as you can see it's got a little color to it looking nice and pretty it's nice and soft you can basically take it just away from the skin right now easily so I did it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes um, this was a smaller one pound delicata squash if you're using butternut or acorn it's gonna decide you know what what how big it is and what size it is depending on how long it'll take so from here we're just gonna gently remove the soft squash from its skin so that we can process this through the food mill as well just be careful not to get any skin because um, it doesn't taste great it'll be hard to move through the food processor but if you do it right, and I have faith that you will, it should come away from the skin quite easily. Okay, so we have the 
clean squash in <clears throat> the food mill. You could use an electric food processor if you like for this step. Um, I don't like to use it for the potatoes because it binds it up, which will make the end result milky, kind of tough. You want it to be soft and pillowy. So we're just going to do the same thing with the squash that we did with the potatoes. Again, make sure we have a bowl underneath to catch the squash that's going to come through. It's going to cling to the sides a little bit, so make sure you get a spatula. Scrape it down a little bit. Okay, so now we have all of our mise en place ready to go, so we can start mixing up the gnocchi. Um, so first we're just going to add the potatoes to the squash. A little grana padana, about half a cup of grana padana, parmesan, pecorino, any kind of similar cheese like that. One egg that's lightly beaten so we can incorporate it evenly. If you don't beat it beforehand, it might not evenly distribute within the mix. About a tablespoon, um, about a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, freshly ground nutmeg. And then I also have about half a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. Evenly put that in there. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of kosher salt. Make sure you use kosher salt, not iodized or it'll be too salty. We're gonna mix this around gently so it starts to come together. It'll seem pretty loose, which is fine because we're about to add some flour to it. And make it all come together. So this is about one and three quarter cups, two cups of all purpose non-bleached flour. We're gonna add that in gently, fold it in a little bit at a time. We don't want it to be too dry, so we're just gonna mix it as we go, kind of see how it comes together, see what it's looking like. It's all about eyeballing, see, you know, what kind of uh, dough comes together. We don't want it to be too dry, we don't want it to be too loose, or else we won't be able to roll it out. Just kind of gently fold it and turn it over. You don't want to mix it with a, you know, stick blender or anything like that, or it'll come out too gummy and undesirable. Good test is to kind of roll it around, play around with the dough, see where you're at. We're just about there. And at this point, if you want to just turn it out onto your work surface, it would be easier to do by hand at this point. If you have a little bench scraper, you kind of turn it over, fold it over. As you can see, it's still a little wet, sticking to my hands a little bit. So we need to go a little longer, a little more flour. Okay, so it's not sticking to my hands anymore. It's holding its shape. It's not too dry. So I think I'm gonna keep it where it's at right now. Okay, so we've taken the cutting board away, cleaned up the station, make sure there's no moisture on there, wipe it up with a paper towel, and then we're gonna lightly flour the surface. 
so the gnocchi dough does not stick while you're rolling it out. Flour up your hands a little bit. Take the dough, kind of roll it in your floured hands so you get a nice little log shape. And then we're gonna place it on your work surface and just gently roll it out. Pressing down firmly but not too firm as to create divots in the dough. Just want a nice cylinder. You're gonna kind of roll out this way with your fingertips to get a nice uniform shape. About a half inch size is what we're looking for. Almost there. All right, we're looking pretty good. Pretty uniform, doesn't have to be perfect. And then take a knife, about three quarters of an inch portion, all the way down the line. So now we have them portioned out to about three quarters of an inch. You can use them as is, put them on a lightly floured uh, parchment lined sheet tray and cover them lightly with plastic wrap, put them in the fridge for about an hour to rest or you can kind of spruce it up a little bit and put it on a little gnocchi board and give it a little shape, a little color, a little bounce if you want. Okay, just roll it over nicely with your thumb. Give you a little groove in there. Up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, so our gnocchi has rested for an hour, and we're going to cook them in a pot of lightly salted, rolling boiled uh, water. We're just going to let them cook. Probably about a minute or so, basically until they rise to the surface of the water is when they're ready to go. Now you can cook them the whole way in the water and eat it that way, but what I like to do is par cook them till they reach the surface of the water and then pan sear them to get a little color on them uh, to finish cooking them all the way through. It just looks a little nicer. It's got a little crust and texture that'll form on the outside. So if you wanna take them out when they hit the top of the water, that's great. And you can pan sear them later on, but if you wanna cook them just all the way through in the water, probably let them float on the top of the water for about another minute or two. Um, the best way to check would just to take, be to take one out and test it, you know, eat it. That's always the best way to see if your food's right. So, you should be coming to the surface here shortly. Oh, and when they're done cooking, make sure you put them uh, on a lined paper towel plate so they dry off. That way when you want to pan sear them later on, They'll absorb more color. If it's too wet, it doesn't really pick up as much color as it should. Okay, we've got a couple coming to the surface already, so that's about it, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me along on this journey. I hope your gnocchi is as tasty as it was for me. Special shout out and thanks to Homemade Indonesia for asking me to give you guys this recipe. If you want to check me out, you can find me on Instagram at I'm Brit James Bish. I'm sure it'll be posted on Homemade Indonesia's page. Thanks again, guys. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. Have a good day.